oh, oh, okay, yeah, that was good. We'll pin your homework on the fridge, you know, like a proud parent. And there are some versions where I'm like, wow, this is amazing. There's so much cool stuff inside there. And I can't possibly show time, which is table variables. How many of you know about the problem with table variables only estimating one row? Oh, it's, it's, y'all are so much smarter than the American audiences. Oh, maybe it only works when I stand one way. No, it works okay this way. So I'm gonna start by going back to the old 2017 compatibility level. You can switch back and forth between 2019 and 2017 all you want. I'm gonna create a table variable. I'm gonna put one row in it, and then I'm gonna do a select star, and we're gonna look at the query plan that comes out of it. So for the longest time, if you only put one row into a table variable, it wasn't really that bad. If I look at the execution plan, and I hover my mouse over it, come on up there, little buddy. Come on up, you go. Oh, it's deciding it doesn't want to go down for, oh, hold on a second. My resolution changed just a second here. There we go. So if I look at the estimated number of rows. Oh, oh, no, it popped out. Oh, it's a, it's a cable. Reboot it. So for the longest time, we had this problem where estimated number of rows, SQL Server would just estimate one row, regardless of how many rows you actually put in it. So here I only put one row in, but what happens if I put all of the sponsors for SQL Saturday today in here? What if I put everybody inside there, then I turn around and do the select star? If I run this just by itself, sure the query runs fast, but my goal here isn't to show you slow queries, it's to show you where SQL Server does something odd. Estimated number of rows, one, actual number of rows is 11. So for the longest time, you heard experts saying, don't use table variables, they're terrible, they cause all kinds of problems. But Americans didn't listen. So Americans kept writing code with table variables over and over again. You probably have some code that you inherited from us dumb Americans who still have table variables inside. I'm sure you would never do that, but Americans, it's another story. So because we couldn't get Americans to listen to that, what we did, I say we, again, I don't work with Microsoft, but what we, they did was they added a change in SQL Server 2019. I'm gonna run the exact same code, I'm just changing my database's compatibility level and that's it. So when I change my compatibility level and then I turn around and I run the exact same query again, highlight it all, and then go run it, if I look at the actual execution plan, all of a sudden now, estimated number of rows is 11. I didn't have to fix my code, I didn't have to change anything about the code. All of a sudden, I'm just gonna start getting more accurate execution plans. So that's pretty good. That's a good start. Where you really start to see it as a big deal is inside of stuff like stored procedures. So these are the kind of stored procedures that Americans will write. We'll go and say a stored procedure accepts a location, and I'm looking for all of the users who are in a particular location. I'm gonna dump, say, a whole bunch of rows into this table variable, and then I'm gonna go take the contents of the table variable and join to other tables. This is where the query performance really starts to suck. So I'm gonna take that exact stored procedure, then I'm gonna go run it, and I'm gonna run it for a country that needs a whole lot of help, the United States. We have a lot of users for Stack Overflow in our country. Now, I'm using old 2017 compatibility level, and this query sucks. It's taking some time in order to render the output. This was the problem that we always had for the longest time. Because it only estimated one row would come out of the table variable, SQL Server didn't guess that it would need enough memory in order to run this query. Memory grants are my favorite thing out of SQL Server to look at. It tends to make some pretty bad guesses about how much memory it needs, and when it way underestimates, like it's doing here, it takes a really long time because your query results spill to TempDB. You would think that SQL Server would just start asking for more and more memory. I don't have a small laptop. I have a decently big laptop, and yet this thing is limping along with hardly any memory allocated to this query. To see how bad it is, I'm gonna take that exact query 
go into another window, and I'm just gonna get the estimated execution plan. So the first thing the SQL Server did was it dumped those rows into a table variable. SQL Server, how many rows do you think are going into that table variable? 8,704. I always use a guy's voice for SQL Server because he's dumb and he's stubborn and he refuses to ask for directions. Trust me, I got this. And he doesn't usually got this. So estimated number of rows, I'll put an 8,000 into this table variable. Okay, great. Now that you turn around and select the data back out, how many rows do you think are going to be inside there when you get those out? Well, I don't know. One. One sounds good. If I hover my mouse over there, estimated number of rows is one. Well, the problem with that is if I look at how much memory SQL Server granted in order to run this query, you can see memory grants way over here on the side. How much deep memory do you need in order to run this query SQL Server? Oh, about two megabytes, like a floppy drive that's lying around from grandpa that's collecting dust. That's hardly, my server has 16 gigs of RAM, and SQL Server's only allocating two megabytes of memory. So this query ends up spilling to disk. It takes forever to run. The whole thing finished in a minute 43, it took a minute 43 in order to execute, and if I look at the actual execution plan, here's a big part of the problem. SQL Server didn't allocate enough memory in order to do this sort, so we ended up spilling about 200,000 pages into TempDB. Here's the really crappy problem. If I run that query again, it does it again, and again, and again, I won't make you sit and wait for that, because obviously that sucks, and we need something else instead. So the something else instead, oh, that wasn't so bad, 10 seconds. Oh, let's go see if you still spilled the stuff to disk. You did, you still wrote 200,000 pages to SSD, it's just that now my SSDs are bulked up and they're like, yeah, we're ready to write 200,000 pages every time this runs. So let's try the better way. Let's try it with SQL Server 2019. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just switch it over to 2019 and run the exact same query again. Now it was running in 10 seconds a second ago, now we're down to two seconds. And the reason why we're down to two seconds is if I look at the sort did not spill to disk, and instead of granting a floppy disk's worth of memory, SQL Server says, I would like about 1.4 gigs worth of RAM. Now this is kind of awesome. At first glance, this sounds fantastic because now your queries will start getting better estimates because they understand how many rows are gonna come out of that table variable. Here, we have the estimated number of rows. Some of you may not be on Management Studio 18 yet. This is the latest version of Management Studio. The reason why I adore it is it shows the estimated number and actual number of rows right there on the query plan. So you can see where SQL Server got drunk and messed up. Here he stayed sober the entire time he processed and he guessed 8,000 rows and 8,000 actually came back, which sounds good and it is, but it's not when you run the same stored procedure again for a different place. Right now, we're running it for the United States. And it's just kind of interesting to see the kinds of questions that people in the United States ask. Can I put comments inside a JSON file? How do I loop through an array in JavaScript? Okay, whatever. So now let's turn around and let's run it for a different country. Let's run it for, say, Israel. It is kind of interesting to see the questions that y'all ask, though. Do you have a lot of socks? And why do you need to pick an algorithm for your sock sorting? This is an actual question on Stack Overflow. This is the highest rated question ever asked by someone in Israel. Yeah. So here's the question. And maybe the person who asked it happens to be inside the room. Oh, I'll have a Wi-Fi. So, oh, there it goes. So let's see here. How do I pair socks from a pile efficiently? <laughs> Yesterday I was pairing the socks from the clean laundry and I figured, 
Y'all either have a lot of time on your hands or a lot of socks. One of the two. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. So that person is a myth. I wonder if that person is here. Software engineer, well, people at Google, now it kind of makes sense that they were doing that kind of thing. I guess they have a lot of time on their hands. Um, but if I go back to the query, it ran fast. No one's going to complain about how slow this query runs. It runs very quickly, but it has a dark side. If I look at the number of estimated rows, the number of estimated rows is cached from the first time that the query ran, not the parameters you just passed in. So now we're starting to get estimates from the first time people ran the query. How many of you have done troubleshooting on parameter sniffing before? Hopefully you're getting good at it. You're going to be seeing a lot more of that in SQL Server 2019. So, which it sounds like I'm joking, but it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. So inside this demo script, and the whole demo script, I'll show you the URL at the end. Uh, you can go download the whole demo script. It's all open source. You can also, I licensed it with MIT. You can go use it with your co-host, co-workers, whatever. So the good news is, is the table variables get stats. And the bad news is that now you have more troubleshooting of parameter sniffing, because whoever happens to run the query first sets the standard for everyone who runs from that point forward. Now, because parameter sniffing has sucked so bad for so long to troubleshoot, and this is what so many of us have to deal with for a living, why is the query all of a sudden sometimes slow? So Microsoft has heard that, and they've added a feature inside of SQL Server 2019 to make it a little bit easier. Now before, with 2017, I'm back in SQL Server 2017 now, one of the problems that we had was those memory grants would ride or die. Those memory grants would just keep being exactly the same every single time the query runs. So if I run this for the United States, I'll zoom out a little here and show you the problem. If I run this for the United States, the sort ends up spilling to disk every single time, over and over again. SQL Server will keep writing a quarter million AK pages to disk. It's like Groundhog Day every time SQL Server runs the query. Maybe this time will be different. Maybe my job won't suck. I'll show up again today and maybe things will be better, better just like your job. However, if I switch it back over to the newer compat level, we have something cool in the new version that's going to help this dramatically. So let's switch over to SQL Server 2019, and let's run it first once. Now, we already know that this thing's faster on 2019, but it's better than that. If I look over at the execution plan, SQL Server had to guess how much memory it was going to take to sort these millions or whatever of rows that are coming back. So if I look at the select and go into the properties, SQL Server says, I, I desire 1.4. I like how SQL Server's open with its emotions. It tells us what it desires. <laughs> Here comes jokes about my wife, but I'm not going to do that again. I learned after the last time someone had a camera. Um, so desired memory 1.4 gigs, and it actually got granted 1.4 gigs. There's this new line in here, is memory grant feedback adjusted? You know what, I really like Microsoft for a lot of things, but one thing I really don't like is how they name things. Seriously, is memory grant feedback adjusted? That was the best you could do? You did that. I know you did that. No, he says no, it's just the first execution. So this is the first time that the query has run since I started playing around with the compat level. Let's try and run it again, execute. Remember last time, it wanted 1.4 gigs of RAM. This time, how much does he want? Half as much. This time he says, you didn't need so much memory, so I'm going to give you less. Which sounds bad, but it's actually awesome. You don't want to give every running query a whole bunch of memory. Maybe you've monitored page life expectancy. How many of you have monitored page life expectancy on your servers? So it goes like a sawtooth. It goes up, 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 down, up, 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 down. Well, sometimes when it goes down, it's because queries are asking for more memory than they need. They're asking for tens of gigs of RAM. SQL Server's clearing out all that memory and handing it to the query every time it runs. So like this, you might think that your page life expectancy is dropping because a query is running a long time. No, it might be really fast. It just might be asking for too much RAM. 
So Microsoft got smart and they started adjusting this. You see how now it says, is memory grant feedback adjusted? It says, yes, I'm in the middle of adjusting this. And every time your query runs, it will try changing the amount of RAM in order to make it run fast, but not so much memory that it causes SQL Server to run slow. That's not quite as quick. Let's go into execution plan. Go look at memory grant info. Yes, it's still adjusting. Let's run it a few more times. Execute. 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 All right, you figured it out yet, SQL Server? Have you decided how much memory you want to grant to the query? Uh, no, I'm adjusting. Give me some time. Now, one of the things I like about this is that SQL Server is learning. It's starting to figure out how what is the right amount of memory. But this also makes your job a little harder because when someone brings you a query and they say, hey, why did this query run slow just now? You may run it again and get a totally different memory grant than they just got. Maybe it's better, maybe it's worse. Just try running a couple more times and see how far SQL Server is willing 